This video is sponsored by PCB Way. The water pump that we are going to build today is a low pump and is really similar to the pump that I built in the last video, but actually it's really different. And this sentence made just so much sense. The low pump that we are going to build in this video doesn't have regular low pump rotors. Instead, it has P-wing rotors, aka butterfly rotors, aka Batman rotors. Why I am going to use those weird shape rotors, you might ask? Well, actually, those rotors should have huge benefits, especially for 3D printed water pumps. Not only does it make thumbnail look good, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this, but before we can speak about what those advantages are, we have to understand how the low pump works. The working principle is pretty simple. If you already know how the gear pump works, then the long story short, the low pump works exactly the same way. If you don't, then I help you to understand this with the following animation. The low pump has two rotors. One is rotating clockwise and other counterclockwise. If those two rotors rotate, it's creating a low pressure shown on the inlet side of the water pump. Water will be trapped between rotors and water pump housing, and the rotational movement of the rotors moves the water to the outlet side of the water pump, creating high pressure zone. Because the water is not compressible and the high pressure moves always to the low pressure, it will be discharged back to the low pressure by the outlet. So now we know the basics of how the low pump works. As I mentioned before, why it's so good idea to 3D print P-wing rotors instead of regular low pump rotors? The answer is here. The outer wall of the rotors and water pump housing separates the low and high pressure zones of the water pump. For regular low pump rotors, this tip that separates the zones are way shorter. But why is good and what difference does it make? There is always some amount of the water that can move through this little gap between rotors and the inner wall of the water pump housing into the wrong direction. This is bad and we want to minimize this as much as possible. With the B-wing rotors, this gap is way longer and by that it seals low and high pressure zones way better and less water can move into the wrong direction. Speaking few words about the design. The biggest challenge with this type of rotors is absolutely perfect timing of both of those rotors rotations. If those rotors have even slightest timing error, they will crash to each other. And it's bad. To achieve the perfect timing, we need one pair of timing gears. About this we speak a little bit later. For now, let's finally start printing and boiling this water pump. I 3D printed the housing with my Anycubic Cobra Max. I used PLA, 0.4mm nozzle and shitload of supports. It was just insane to remove. It took me literally 45 minutes to get rid of those. This Aerion filament has out of the planet layer edition. It's really high quality filament. And I'm not paid to say this. Leads I 3D printed with my Creality Sermon D1 and I used also PLA. Gears I 3D printed with my Creality CR10 S5A V3 uh, also with PLA. The yellow rotors I printed with my GDTEC X Plus with ABS and those ones are just prototypes. To fix all the measurement and clearance errors. Rotors that I ended up using I 3D printed with my Nova 3D Veil 2 with translucent red resin. Now all the parts are printed and it's time for assembly. Because in the last video I explained the build in deep details, this time I got this part shorter. And instead of me explaining every single step, we watch one quick building montage. Today's video sponsor PCB Way is known for making PCBs, but this is not all they are doing. They also have CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and even injection molding service. 
Ordering from PCB way is easy as it can be. Just upload your model, select the material and you're basically done. In the last year I have used PCB way service a lot and they always have done an excellent job. So if you need some parts but you don't have right machines, it's more convenient and cheaper to order those from PCB way than to buy the right machines. So if you need some parts and you don't have right skills, tools or machines, PCB way is your one stop solution. Back to the video. The water pump is ready and it's time for testing. But before we do this, let me explain a couple of things that I just did over there. To increase the water tightness, I added some rubber seals. Originally I planned to use even more than I did, but the friction was just so great it was too hard to turn. By the way, it's still hard to turn. By hand, it's pretty impossible. To line up those rotors perfectly, I made it so easy in the last video, but this time I made it even more easier. Basically, here are numbers. One and two. And do I have to explain even more? Short story long, you cannot coaccidentally screw the wrong gear to the wrong rotor. And you cannot screw those on if they haven't perfectly lined up, because those four holes are unique by having different offsets. Also, you saw this footage where I got this gear in half. What happened? Trying to hammer this 8mm shaft into the gear, the fit was so tight that I just broke the gear. And after that, I was not available to get this shaft out. So I served this gear to the half. Then I printed a new one with my brand new Bamboo Lab X1. And this footage is at normal speed. This printer is 20 times faster than a normal FTM printer. Plus the printing quality is the best I have ever seen. The review is coming out of this printer this month. And their Kickstarter campaign is live, so if you are interested of this printer already, I leave the link down below for you. And I'm not paid to say this. I believe some of you have questions what thing this is. Well, it's not doing really much. It's possible to leave this part out. I printed this because I wanted to feel the emptiness inside the gear pump. But why? Well, if the water leaks to the gearbox side of the water pump, then there isn't so much water stored in there because there is just so less space. Anyway, this is not a really important thing. But okay, it's finally time for testing. Let's go outside. Well, the first attempt wasn't something I expected. Negative way. But let's try again. Well, we saw the footage. This water pump isn't performing that great than the last one with regular rotors. At this point I'm sure it's nothing to do with the rotors. There is most likely three factors why this one performs worse than the last one. First and most obvious, this water pump requires way more torque to turn. That's why it's not spinning as fast as the last one. The only way to fix this is to use more power. Second, I had one clearance issue that I didn't fix right away. Between the rotors and the top lead is a 1.4mm cap, so that's why I 3D printed new lead with fixed clearance. By the way, this print took me 1 hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> Nuts. And the third, the end of the tube sucked itself against the water bucket wall. That's why I was wiggling the pump when I was running the test. To fix this, I did this. Now I have fixed all three possible issues. It's time to test this again. Yep, this water pump is performing better than before, but now I'm going serious. I'm going to run this water pump with my 4 705 DC motor gearbox. I built this two videos ago. I 3D really printed some mounts and I attached all those to the wood plate and connected the shafts with 8mm coupler. And power I will take from the car battery. Also I tried to understand if and where and how much this water pump leaks. For now it seems some of the water is leaking from the front and back lead. Also, I fixed this by adding some silicon between the leads and the water pump housing. So, let's give this a spin. This is how my whole test set looks like. Everything is ready, so let's get started. So far, everything works pretty well. Around 10 seconds till the shaft started rotating freely and it stopped turning the pump. Of course I had to fix this, and this means I had to open this water pump. I just added silicon, it wasn't easy, and I destroyed the lead. Shit story short, I got this fixed, and the lead is still usable. 
But it's not watertight anymore. And it will leak. But I don't give a fuck. Again, it worked, for a short time, till it started doing some weird noise. I was thinking that this video ends here, because something inside the bump is so broken. But turns out, those two gears came loose. It should be easy fix. Yep, it was. I drew them in the new gears with carbon fiber and nylon. Again, this pump worked better than before, but the shaft is loose again, from the gearbox this time. I can easily fix this by printing new gears with carbon, but I won't do this right now. I have enough of making this video. By the way, big thank you for watching my videos and hitting the subscribe button. You probably noticed this channel just hit 100,000 subscribers and this is because of you guys. Two and a half years ago I didn't even dream about this, but now it's reality. So thank you a lot. Also thank you for watching this video and see you guys really soon. Bye.